Demons, ghouls, and other dark creatures have been occupying the corners of our minds since we first looked into the darkness beyond the fire we had set for the night ages ago. The malevolent creatures, tricksters, sometimes just seeking to do harm to humans. From the stories, they eventually found their way into the canvas and statues, traveling through history, sometimes being forgotten until someone would find the art among the dust and rumble of a civilization only for it and its stories to reemerge once again. In this little clip, we look into some of these art pieces and entities. We don't focus purely on one period, we go through works from different periods of creativity. The first one, probably known to all of you, is Pazuzu, a bronze statuette of the demon dated somewhere in Mesopotamian, 8th to 7th century BC. Famously, the demon who possessed a 12-year-old girl in the uh, 1973 horror classic The Exorcist. Described in ancient text as the son of Hanbu and king of the wind demons, he stands on two legs and has human arms ending with claws, with two pairs of wings, a scorpion's tail, a snake head erected penis, and a horned bearded head with bulging eyes and snarling canine mouth. Amulets with images of his bull body, or more often just his head, were common in the early first million BC. Rather than a demon who physically possessed defenseless humans, the exorcist, um, as in the exorcist, the Pazuzu was actually a powerful defense against demonic attacks from Lama Tashu. In the movie's world, his frightening appearance was enough to make him plausible enemy, but um, in the original context, Pazuzu's identity was far more complicated and more interesting, to be honest, than as one side in a simple opposition between the good and the evil. The second we're taking a look is the Demon Downcast by Mikhail Vrubel considered one of the more well-known demon paintings in Europe. The demon of this painting is seen as being in severe grief or weakness as he's centered in a painting's foreground. Rubel first painted the demon and spent a considerable amount of time deciding on what he would paint in the background to complete his work. He chose to paint high Pearly Mountains after receiving a photograph of the Caucasus Mountains from a friend. The painting has a distinct jagged edge that Vrubel was known to incorporate into his works. This makes the painting appear almost like stained glass window that you might normally find in a church. Interestingly, the painting was done with a knife, which was characteristic of um, Vrubel's other works. The third one we're taking a look is uh, by John Martin and called the Pandemonium. The painting is not so much about a demon, but a doom and gloom and demonic presence. It's an actual deception of uh, hell. Ancient structures surrounded by lava, small creatures in the shadows that you can barely see, and one of the occupants raising his hands in the foreground. It surely brings the desolation of hell into your mind, to be honest place from which you cannot walk away once entered. The last one we take a look at is Asmondeus, which is the actual king of demons, described as one of the worst of demons as well, as de depicted in the Colin de Plantis Dictionary Infernal, which is a book on demonology describing demons organized in hierarchies. According to that, he is strong, powerful, and appears with three heads. The first is like a bull, the second like a man, and the third like a ram. The tail of a serpent, and from his mouth issues flames of fire. Also, if this wasn't enough, he sits upon an infernal dragon, holds the lance with banner, and amongst the legion of Aimaemon as Monday governs seven two legions of infernal spirits. Not someone you want haunting in your dreams. 
So, what do you think? Is any other demons in your mind you would like to see? Let us know in the comments.